Well, let's start with Sears. I think a lot of people are skeptical about these smaller store formats, a renewed focus on these goods like appliances, et cetera. Do you think this is enough to, you know, give Sears the boost it needs at this point? So the focus of these new smaller stores for Sears is going to be home goods, which they were really strong, you know, focused 10, 15 years ago, Kenmore line, et cetera. Now I think it's a great strategy. The problem is they're holding on to those other 425 large footprint department stores. So these newer stores are about 10% of the size of the older Sears department stores. However, they still have all of that overhead, everything holding them back. So my opinion is like, do the thing. If you're going to go into this new omnichannel platform and have online and delivery and blah, 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 do it. Don't tiptoe the line. <laughs> So is that so? What does Sears need to do in order to regain? Get rid of those 425 large department stores, save the overhead, and maybe focus. lease them to Amazon for warehouses or something. Yeah, yeah. Utilize their real estate, but you know you're not going to get the traffic to maintain those stores. So use the word omnichannel, which is my favorite word and Tim's least favorite word. It's just yeah, so I, I've heard that. <laughs> well, when you think of Sears, you don't think of Sears.com. Do you no. think Sears can properly execute an omnichannel strategy where their smaller store formats support online commerce? Well, so what they're going to do is have kiosks in the smaller stores so that you can order online. Basically, you'll go through the process, the shopping process, with a Sears representative, find the best appliances for you. They're going to expand Kenmar into more of like plates and, and um, different types of kitchen goods farther away from the washer and dryers and those types of things that we're used to seeing from the brand. Now, that is, it, it's this combination of experiential and online, which makes for a good omnichannel play. So I think if they execute that well, they have a chance. It's, it's just those other stores. What yeah. chances would you give Sears of, of surviving five years out from now? <laughs> Fifteen percent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I mean, I'm not now. super confident. I, I like this concept, but I'd like to see them execute it wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk about H&M because Tim is very excited about plant-based things. Uh, <laughs> launching a line that's plant-based, essentially, using fruit pits and fruit waste, these kinds of things. Yeah. What are your thoughts on, on why a company like H&M would be doing this? Is it to get that consumer interest? Is it because they're truly envir environmentally conscious? Yeah, you know, so I think that this is more of the gimmick uh, type of things. I, I love the idea and the, the drive behind sustainable clothing. However, the irony is that H&M is fast commerce. It's fast fashion. Right, which, which is means, very wasteful. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You wear something for a season, you throw it away, maybe you donate it. So it's exactly um, opposite of what they're known for. The other problem is to turn fruit waste, so let's talk about pineapple husks, to turn them into viable clothing products, you have to use a whole lot of chemicals. There's a whole lot of you know, unnecessary uh, water waste that goes into the process. So it's actually the antithesis of eco-consciousness. Mm. Another big story that we're following this week is the new partnership with Beyonce and Adidas. Uh, it's athleisure and mm -hmm. uh, it's Look, it's huge. I think it's anything that Beyonce does is a big deal. Well, this is Beyonce being Beyonce. Yeah. And like, you want to talk about someone doing the thing? Like, that is, <laughs> she goes wholehearted. She goes in for the kill, right? So she's going to be the first African-American woman to complete, have 100% ownership of an apparel, um, of an athleisure apparel line. So that's super exciting for the entire industry. And she also is an amazing creative director. She has the vision and she gets involved. Well, so what's the relationship with Adidas if she's 100% owner of this company? How so does it work? it's Ivy Park is now owned by Beyonce, which is going to collaborate with Adidas. And Adidas has had success with other partnerships with Kanye West, yes. with Pharrell Williams. What is the precedent here for Adidas partnering with a celebrity like Beyonce? Adidas knows how to do it and to do it well. So they let the celebrity have that creative direction. They did a great job with Yeezy and with Kanye West. So this is going to be Beyonce driving what the brand looks like, Adidas being a distribution partner. Is this a big loss for say a Nike who now probably won't be working with Beyonce? Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that Nike's been doing some of their own great kind of revamps of their athletic line. So it's not just like running apparel. There's actually some style and some, uh, some jazz and pizzazz to their stuff. Because what's happening is that there's been so many of these micro brands launching in athleisure. So uh, the Carbon 38s of the world, the D2C, the um, Bandier here in New York, that has been where 
the market's been moving. Now, with Beyonce coming in and, and Nike kind of changing its focus and Adidas having these great collaborations, they are making a play to get back into things. All right, yeah. retail expert Aaron Sykes. Aaron, thank great you again for joining us today. Great stuff. Of Thanks, course. Aaron. Thank you.